Um, basically, sorry. Yeah, basically, all of the energy that drives life on the planet actually originates from the sun, including, of course, the wind. And the wind is caused because the sun is shining by and large on somewhere between the, the, the two tropics. And where it shines, the warm air rises, it gets displaced by polar, by polar air blowing down at ground level. And so you get this cycle of air circulating, and then it's mixed with the fact that the earth is rotating and the friction of the land masses to create complex areas of high and low pressure. And that creates the weather systems that we have and the fact that it heats at different rates on land and sea. And so there's a whole load of factors. But essentially all of our energy, including our wind energy, basically comes from the sun. Now Ireland is um, very well placed to develop wind energy. In fact, Ireland and the UK have the, have the best wind in all of Europe. Um, in Ireland recently we've had the introduction of a feed-in tariff. In the UK they've had a feed-in tariff and a very generous one in some parts of the UK for quite a long time. We in Ireland have very liberal planning laws and we come on to that in a wee while. And in Ireland we have a very high percentage of one-off houses. So we're very well placed as a country in which to have um, a domestic wind turbine business. This is the European wind map and you can see this area here has mean wind speeds in excess of 6 metres per second. So Ireland and Scotland by far the best. But even the worst parts of Ireland would compare favourably with both the east and west coast of Spain. And anybody who's been in Spain lately will notice driving through the mountains that they have quite a lot of wind turbines, even though they have poorer wind conditions than the Midlands in Ireland. So we're very well placed in the UK and Ireland to have an indigenous domestic wind turbine industry, or that's what I would argue. Up until recently um, in Ireland, if you spilled, they called it spilling electricity onto the grid and you did it free of charge and you didn't get paid for it. So people tended to put in wind turbines that were battery based that could store their own power. That has changed recently. So they, there's, there's a feed in tariff in Ireland at the moment, which is set to, at today's rate is nine cents, but that's actually a variable rate depending on energy prices. And in addition to that, there's a 10 cent additional bonus <coughs> payable in Ireland on the first 4,000 microgenerators installed or over the first three years. And it applies to the first 3,000 kilowatt hours that you install. So from that point of view, it sort of uh, favors smaller wind turbines or smaller photovoltaic. It doesn't favor you putting in a huge generator and they're not gonna let you export all your power at 19 cents per kilowatt hour. But it does provide a, a top up that bonus is over the first five years. For the purposes of that tariff, microgeneration in Ireland is de defined as below 11 kilowatts if it's a three-phase supply, or below about six kilowatts if it's a single-phase supply. In the UK and in Northern Ireland, in addition to the feed-in tariff, they get something called renewable, renewable obligation certificates, or ROCs they're called for short. And basically you get paid, um, at the moment it's four and a half pence, but that's a variable rate and there's double rocks coming in in some areas. But you get paid that for all the electricity you produce, even if you don't sell it. So you've got a meter coming off your solar PVs or your, or your wind turbine, measuring all the electricity that they produce. And whether you sell that onto the grid or whether you use it yourself, you actually get paid for it. So um, that's a very um, generous proposal. And that's where they're effectively the electricity companies are obliged to buy the carbon credits when you're producing your own electricity. Okay, <coughs> we're going to move on to, to um, site selection and assessing. Because one of, the, um, one of the very important considerations is to look at whether a turbine is viable for your site or not. There's no point in having wind turbines going in where they don't work. And that's been a mistake that's been made in other countries. People have been putting them into situations in which they don't work, and it gives the industry a bad name. So you don't use them if you live in a housing estate, despite the fact that there are companies selling turbines particularly directed at that market. And this sort of a product, simply, you can see the turbine sitting on, on, on the roof, under the roof line of this house, it's not going to get the wind. It's not going to um, get clean wind. Basically, it's not just whether the wind is blowing but how consistently it's coming from a particular direction 
and whether or not it's suffering from turbulence. Um, the the dynamics of a blade, I'll pick up a small blade here, people assume that what actually happens is that the wind pushes the blade and forces it to go round, as if it was kind of just the wind pushing the blade. That's not actually what happens for the most part. That is what happens to start a blade from to turning. But once it gets going, it, it works like the wing of an aircraft and it's got lift in the same way as a wing in an aircraft. It's got an area of low pressure and an area of high pressure pushing the blade to move along that line. And <clears throat> if you get turbulence, as you know in an, air, an airplane, if you get turbulence, it can drop like a stone and it can bump and move around all over the place. Similarly, if you get turbulent air around a, the blade of a turbine, it causes it decimates the output of the turbine. There's no other way to describe it. And it also increases the vibration and the, the wear and tear on the blade, on the bearings and all the components of the turbine. So you need to avoid turbulent air. What you need is clean laminar flow of air over the blades of the turbine. The outside tip of the blade of a turbine is often traveling at seven or eight times, even up to 10 times the wind speed. So on a, on a good day, on a, on a, a three-meter uh, rotor, you might have the outside tip of the blade traveling at 200 or 240 kilometers per hour. So it's traveling way above the wind speed. It's not a case of the wind pushing the blade. It's more like the sail on a boat. So you need to avoid turbulence at all costs. Having done that, if you, um, if you do have a, um, a wind turbine site that's suitable, it is a lot more cost-effective than photovoltaic panels. But if you, if you buy, say, a one kilowatt turbine, you can't expect average production of one kilowatt. What you're going to get on a very good site for a wind farm location, you'll get 40% of that on average. Between 35 and 40% on an excellent site would be the very best that you could expect. Normally in a domestic site, on a very good one, you get a third of that output on average. And I've seen sites where you would get a 20th or even, even worse of the output on average. Compared to that, if you look at, say, micro-hydro, if you have a stream coming off a mountain that's got water in it all year round, a one kilowatt micro-hydro would be producing one kilowatt consistently. That might be the equivalent to having a 10 kilowatt turbine on the same site. So if you have a micro-hydro option where you've got that power output 24-7, 365 days a year, then it's a, it is by far the most cost-effective. But if you don't have a micro-hydro site, <coughs> then... Um, wind is a, the second most cost-effective cost renewable electricity system at the moment. One of the beauties of generating at your own home from the point of view of the, the, the electricity supplier is that it doesn't require any reinforcement of the grid. All the electricity that you're producing is being produced and used locally within your own local network. So we don't have to reinforce the grid. The grid can go and take a hike. Whereas to book wind energy in on mountaintops, we do actually need the, the, the grid reinforcement and there's a lot of infrastructure that has to go into place to do that. Okay, 